Hello everyone and welcome to Halloween card 3. Um, again, some MFT new stamps and dynamics. This time though, while, when this video goes live, um, all the products are live as well, so no more teasing you with things you can't get. <laughs> so I'm going to do some experimenting here, and I thought I would just turn on the camera and see where this goes. So I've got a piece of Tim Holtz uh, Distress Watercolor cardstock, and I have it so the smooth side is facing me. And I'm inking up stamps from the new My Favorite Things Trick or Treat stamp set with MFT's Black Licorice Hybrid Ink. And I stamped the little kind of background stamp first off to the side. But I wanted to continue that little like jagged grass look. So you could do it one of two ways. You could either cut your stamp or if that bothers you, you can do what I did here. And I just taped off um, the area I didn't want to ink up and then just inked up that little zigzag there peeled the tape off and then um, lined it up with um, the other pieces of the stamp and that's why I had used my ruler and a pencil just to draw a straight line just to give me a little bit of a guide so that I didn't have like a hill going on on my card front because I wanted it to be straight. So I used the little character that I plan on coloring in later and laid that out on the card before I stamped the rest of the elements. And then I pulled out some liquid frisket. Now some of you may be familiar with this, um, some of you may not have a clue what this is. I just learned about it more recently. I've kind of known about rubber cement. I've never used it. I've never used liquid frisket in my life. I got this from an art supply store and it's been sitting for weeks now in my stash and I just haven't got around to trying it. So I thought I would try it out on this card. The one thing I do know about it is you need to use an old or a very cheap brush with this because it's probably going to ruin your brushes. So I've just got this little cheapo brush that came in, you know, my cheap watercolors from Michaels or whatever. So I kept the brush because you never know and it's perfect for this. And all you do is paint it over the areas you do not want um, to be absorbed with color. Uh, basically, rather than stamping onto a masking paper, cutting out and masking the images, this does it in a more um, waterproof way, I guess. Like this is what you would use for watercoloring. Like all those little areas that I want lighter so that I can just easily watercolor my entire background, the liquid frisket is going to mask that. So I did that all that first because I needed to set it aside and let it dry. It takes quite a while to dry. I even like blasted it with my heat tool for a bit. And then, yeah, let it dry. You need to apply a fairly thick coat of it, and it goes on kind of yellowish. And FYI, if you've never used it before, it stinks to high heaven. I knew that before I got it, so I was prepared for that, but it, it just reeks. It's gross. So, stamp the little images that I wanted on their coordinating die cuts. I'd also die cut them from the watercolor cardstock and um, die cut them smooth face up so I could stamp um, with the black licorice hybrid ink. And then I took my main panel here and I'm just taping it to my little cutting board to kind of help prevent it getting warped since I'm going to watercolor this whole piece. So taped it with uh, painter tape and then I'm going to use my My Favorite Things dye ink pads to watercolor with. So I've shown this before, um, any dye ink pad is going to work um, quite well for this. It just, I prefer dye, people have asked, you know, do the hybrid inks work, pigment inks, that kind of thing. It depends on the ink. Really, you could make almost anything work to a degree, but dye inks just work best because they're like water-based, so they work well with water. Um, they're all different though. It's kind of fun to experiment. So if you don't have watercolors, but you have some dye ink pads, use those. They're fun. So I just mushed um, the night shift blue, which is kind of a navy blue, onto a craft sheet, and I mixed it with a little bit of water, and then I'm just painting it onto um, background, which I had got wet with just clean water, um, to begin with just to give it a little bit more wiggle room so things blend a little bit more. Um, that's the one thing when you're watercoloring with dye inks they're not going to be very smooth and blend really well like a traditional watercolor would but they still work. Um, and another thing with dye inks a lot of them you'll notice they will change when you add water to them and then heat and that sort of things they can sort of change so these colors do change a bit as I dry them. So anyway once I dried the background, this is where the liquid frisket is really cool, is you just rub your fingers against it and it peels off. So it did pretty good at masking off these smaller images. I probably should have applied it a little bit thicker. I'm not sure. Like I said, this is my very first time using it, so I'll have to experiment some more. But it was neat anyway to try it out. So I removed the liquid frisket and then I just used a little bit of banana split dye ink and got that really, really wet and painted in the little stars and the moon. 
And then for the tombstone and the skull, I'm using steel gray ink. I purposely didn't use the liquid frisket on the tombstone because I knew I was going to use a dark ink um, to watercolor it. So I just wanted to see how um, well I could kind of cover that up. Like I said, this whole thing was just kind of an experiment, really. And it did work. <laughs> but normally I would have masked that off as well, um, depending on the color I wanted to paint it, not just to make things easier. But no, it worked to just... Um, paint it darker with the steel gray ink and then I used the same ink I just watered it down more so it was a lighter concentration for the skull and the bone and this one really changes with water and heat like look at that it just kind of turned more of a brownie gray it was kind of cool I was I thought it was neat so um, dried that and then for the ground I'm just using some jelly bean green dye ink so mush that down pick that up with my water brush um, did a good layer of that and then I picked up um, more concentrated ink to add a little bit of a darker area around the bottom of the tombstone and then finally hit that one last time with my heat tool to get it to dry um, mostly just because I'm impatient and then when it comes to peeling off the painters tape from the cardstock always peel off at an angle that really helps um, minimize any tearing or anything like that it's the corners mostly that you need to be the most careful about so set that aside and then I'm going to go on to coloring in I don't know what you would call this guy I just call him a funny character <laughs> I even called him that in the MFT product video because I was like I don't know what you call him for to, in some reason I think of him as a scarecrow so I don't know I just think he's cute so I colored his skin with grape jelly um, ink and then I grabbed some orange fizz ink to do his little outfit and yeah I've had some people commenting about you know watercoloring and Cobra coloring, just coloring in general, and oh, you're so good at it, and I'd have such a hard time. Honestly, just try it. I've the watercolor aspect is something I have done since the very beginning of starting stamping, so 10 plus years ago. But I've always found it's one of the easiest things to do. It's a fairly forgiving, you can get a lot of depth and definition, which is one color. Like right here, I'm just using the black licorice, but I added a little more water started out lighter and then I just pick up a little more straight ink to add some darker areas and you can kind of just do whatever you want but because it's watercolor you can get away with um, you know not going outside the lines a bit or missing little spots and it's totally forgiving so I highly recommend trying it if you haven't and just just do it everybody has at least a few dye inks if you're stamping at all so mush them onto a non-porous surface and pick it up with a little you know a paintbrush and some water and just paint it's fun so after I was done coloring the little guy, I used the black licorice again to quickly color in um, these two little bats here, just holding the very tip of it with my fingernail just to keep them in place. So I was going to use these on the inside of the card, but I was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. So no pun intended here with the bats. <laughs> but just seeing what works and what didn't and decided to trim down the edges of that panel so that there wasn't much of a border left at all. But I wanted to mount it onto an A2 um, card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I used foam tape for that so that it had a fair bit of foam tape. Just it warped a tiny bit with the watercoloring, but not very much. But I like to use a lot of foam tape when I use watercolor um, cardstock. So I centered that onto my card front. And then I popped up the little character and the bats with more foam tape. This I just trimmed it down with my scissors to get it narrow enough to fit on the back of these smaller pieces. Now I'm going to pop that onto the main, you know, scene that I've created here. And then, yeah, like I said, I was going to use the bats on the inside, but then I thought they looked really cute with the rest of the characters. And I love that they're going to be popped up on the foam tape. So two tiny little bits of foam tape just pop behind um, their bodies here. And then I'm going to pop those onto the card front and that finishes off the front of the card. But of course, I always have to finish the inside of the card. So I decided to do something a little fun on the inside. Um, I used the same little background scene again, this time just with Grot, um, Grot Grey ink. So inked that up, stamped it, and then just did the same thing by taping off the little skull area so that I've got just the very um, little pinking edge of the stamp here. And you always want to make sure your stamp is really, really clean so that you're not stamping um, any residue or anything on the rest of the card and like ruining the whole effect. So did that three more times, so I've got that little like jagged edge grass going and then I was like while I'm at it I might as well just keep taping like a crazy person and do the whole sentiment in different colors. <laughs> so I taped off um, the rest of the sentiment and inked up just the top part, the trick or treat, with grape jelly ink and then made sure I got the inside of this card as flat as possible. Again, if I had planned this out ahead of time I would have done this before adhering um, the everything else on the front of the card with foam tape so that this was 
flat, but it works. So did that, cleaned it really, really well again, and I always rub my hands against it to remove any residue, and then taped off all the other areas of the stamp so I can um, ink up just the center part with orange fizz ink, and then peel that tape off, and then flip it over, line it up over the original one, and stamp it. And I just keep repeating that until I'm completely done. With this stamp, it's actually pretty easy. The words are far enough apart. And it's just the way it's laid out. It worked out really well. I only, this part right here, just the gimme something, took the most amount of tape. And then just inked it up with um, more jelly bean green ink. Peeled it off. Rubbed my fingers on spots I might have got ink onto just in case. Lined it up, stamped it, and finally the last little bit I taped off and inked up with the black licorice ink. That's all there was to it, so you get this fun multicolored stamp. If you really want to, you could cut it apart and do it all separately, but this works just as well. And then I stamped the bats with the same grout gray ink, and that finished off the card. So as always, there will be a link below the video to my blog post with all the info, as well as links to all the supplies used, so make sure to check out the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!